Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. A lot of games use scientific principles to lend their stories an air of realism. Sometimes they don't quite nail it, which keeps Neil deGrasse Tyson up at night. Some games, however, mix and match scientific ideas and straight science fiction in a cocktail that's tasty to drink but won't confuse the refined palate of a scientist. One series of games stands out in that regard, and that's the Zero Escape games. Now, we love Zero Escape. The mix of interesting characters and pseudoscientific insanity makes for fantastic storytelling and engaging puzzle solving. But one thing Zero Escape is known for is mixing truth and fiction together, potentially confusing you about which parts are real and which parts are just there to convince you that an ancient Egyptian princess could be frozen in a special form of ice to keep her preserved despite being stored for thousands of years in a pyramid. These games are plot and puzzle heavy, and it's impossible to talk about the ins and outs without giving away key information, so consider this your spoiler warning. Zero Escape games each feature a similar setup. A group of nine people find themselves trapped in some sort of facility, and they're forced to play a deadly game by a mysterious antagonist named Zero. There are a ton of scientific concepts tossed around in each game, and sometimes they're just red herrings that have nothing to do with the plot. So, to simplify, we thought we'd talk about the most important one from each game that makes each story possible. The first one is the morphogenetic field. In Zero Escape, the morphogenetic field is treated as a sort of catch-all for psychic communication between people and even across time. The main character of 999, Junpei, is able to telepathically send his knowledge of the future back in time to his friend to help her solve a puzzle that saves her life. A morphogenetic field sounds like some mystic mumbo-jumbo your crazy New Age aunt believes in, but at one time it was a real biological theory. It was first introduced in 1910 as a way of explaining how different cells knew what they should do in an organism. Biologists, for example, can take cells from, say, the limb of an embryo, transplant them to another embryo, and they would grow and function as a limb. As we learned more about chromosomes and genes, however, this theory lost most of its support, since we finally understood how genes function. The Zero Escape games draw from the work of a man named Rupert Sheldrake, who sees the concept of morphogenetic fields, and specifically what he refers to as morphic resonance, as an inherent ability of organisms to share knowledge through the ether and across generations. His work has largely been discredited, however. Even still, you'll have to play 999 a bunch, even if you do everything right the first time, because they decided sending information through the ether was a crucial game mechanic. I'm so sick of this first room. In the second game, Virtue's Last Reward, as in the rest of the trilogy, you'll experience a story that's told over several diverging timelines. Because of the main character Sigma's abilities, he is able to pass knowledge of his other selves through the morphogenetic field, thus enabling him to solve puzzles using information he wouldn't otherwise have access to in a particular timeline. This is the game that took the often hated backtracking mechanic, like found in the previous game, and made it not just interesting, but compelling. You'll be glad to jump back and forth along timelines, solving puzzles, because the game makes it so fun. That is, if you don't mind a really annoying rabbit mocking you the whole time. The game brings up the concept of Schrodinger's cat to help explain some of the strange quantum mechanic related plot points. Erwin Schrodinger proposed a thought experiment wherein a cat is placed in a closed box along with poison, a radioactive isotope, a Geiger counter, and a hammer. The radioactive material has a 50-50 chance of decaying and being detected by the Geiger counter. If it decays, the hammer smashes the poison bottle, killing the cat. The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics states that an object in a physical system simultaneously exists in all possible configurations until it is observed. Therefore, the cat is both alive and dead until the box is opened, at which point it settles on a single state of being. What you might not know is that Schrodinger proposed this theory to point out how ridiculously flawed the Copenhagen interpretation is. That interpretation may hold up for electrons, but larger and more complex systems like cats can't be explained so easily. Then again, who really understands cats? Virtue's Last Reward leans pretty heavily on the Copenhagen interpretation, positing that if the box is opened and the cat is observed alive, there must also be a universe where the cat is observed dead. This establishes the multiple timelines, which become the crux of the game's story. So, once again, Zero Escape uses a real-world scientific theory, but it selects the elements that will make the most compelling science fiction story. Nothing wrong with that, just don't cite it as a source on your physics papers. Zero Time Dilemma is the final game in the trilogy. This game, Zero, is the son of two characters in his little death game, which is no way to treat your parents. Who raised you? Part of Zero's plan is to give himself the ability to mind hack, which amounts to about what it sounds like and is pure science fiction. But the way he goes about giving himself these powers is through epigenetics. That is, the study of heritable changes in gene expression that don't actually change the DNA sequence itself. So, a change in phenotype without a change in genotype. 
The cells then read the genetic code differently, which can lead to both positive and negative changes. Epigenetics is controlled by several different modifiers, called tags. The two biggest, though, are methyl groups and histones. Methyl groups function by switching different genes on or off. Histones, on the other hand, control the degree to which a gene is expressed, sort of like a volume knob for your body. Zero uses the stress caused by the decision game to forcibly alter the genetic expression of his parents, which in turn blesses him with psychic powers. Obviously. In reality, epigenetics does have a sizable impact on your life. Too much stress, lack of sleep, and substance abuse can all rewrite your genetic code in some pretty negative ways. We're talking Alzheimer's, cancer, things like that. But positive actions like eating better, getting more sleep, and even mindful meditation have been shown to alter our genetic expression in some pretty great ways. And our epigenetic changes have the potential to last for generations. So Zero has the right idea, but maybe he could have done it in a less gruesome and murdery way? I don't know, I'm just throwing out suggestions here. Hey, thanks for watching. As usual, please like and subscribe if you dig what we do. If you want a more in-depth look about how quantum mechanics could lead to parallel universes, check out this episode on Bioshock Infinite here. It's one of my favorites. And don't forget to keep on playing.